My grandfather's mother was only 18 years old when her 41-year-old husband died. Sometimes a tragic consequence of an arranged marriage with a multi-generational age gap between the couple. In Vietnam at the time, being a husbandless woman was a prison sentence. So my great-grandmother remarried when my grandfather was seven years old. A deeply cut wound that he carried to his grave. Her new husband, unfortunately, would not allow the seed of another man to live with him, and so, starting at the age of seven, my grandfather lived by himself, albeit with his family's financial support, in a gloomy cottage in the village of Tam Thai, district of Bat Bat, province of Sơn Tây. Here, he developed unspeakable emotional trauma that would shape his story and our family's history for the next eight. Decades. On a cruel morning in 1947, my great grandparents' village was attacked by French forces. As my great grandmother was guiding their children to take refuge in the jungle, my great grandfather stayed behind to watch the house. But the colonizer's cold weapon did not care that he had five children and a pregnant wife. As I heard a family member's recount of the story, they gave one signal and he was gone. There was no photo left of him. His friend was able to quickly bury his body in a farmland where he was shot, and my great grandmother could only formally retrieve him two years later. Their house was commandeered into a French headquarters. The daughter she was carrying died shortly after birth, and the rest of their children, including my grandmother, carried the trauma of losing their father that would ripple through the next three generations. But to the colonizers, he was simply one signal. By the age of seven, my grandfather was a fatherless orphan, abandoned by his mother in a lonely cottage in the province of Sơn Tây, Vietnam. By the age of twenty, he has grown into a handsome, smart, and valiant young man who has never known love or belonging. All these qualities combined made him the perfect recruit target in the eyes of Ho Chi Minh when his Communist Party began to usurp North Vietnam territories in 1945. A naive. Victim of propaganda, my grandfather joined the Communist Party and became one of their leaders. When he married my grandmother, whose family were staunch enemies of the communists, he had to make a choice between love and politics. And so, in 1954, after killing six communist officers with the help of three friends, my grandfather escaped North Vietnam with his wife and my father. And for the rest of his life, he slept with a pistol by his side. My grandmother was not a nice person. In fact, those who knew her casually would say that her demeanors were quite abrasive and tactless. But in all those hours that I spent with her while she patiently taught me how to knit, I learned how, at the age of thirteen, she watched her father shot dead by French colonizers and her home commandeered into a French headquarter. I learned that at the age of 18, after their house was once again burned to the ground by communists, she would sneak back into the property to steal what valuables she could to sell and support her family. I learned that as the only girl in the family, she was responsible for taking care of all her brothers while having zero access to the education they were afforded. And I wonder if people only knew of the heavy cross she bore, of the war she fought at home, in addition to the rage. Raging war outside, would they have still expected her to be nice?